Hey, what's happening, Ward Wrestling? Here, man, another amazing show. Uh, we've got uh, one of the one of the best coaches in our state, man, Gavin Osborne, down at George Jenkins. I've uh, been been doing great things down there with the school, with the program, and uh, glad to have him on today. What's up, Coach? Hey, how you doing, Dan? Thanks for having me, man. Super excited to be here. Yeah, man, I'm excited to have you on. I I know we were supposed to do it a few days ago, but I totally forgot I wasn't in town. So my bad, but we're on now. It's cool, man. So, man, what an off season so far for for a lot of your kids. I mean, they've uh, from Drew to to Mia to Rod, and, and I know you've had a lot of kids in that room really working hard. But yeah. uh, those three seem to stick out in my in my brain right now on the successes that those three have been having. Man, it's got to be a fun fun off season for you watching those guys wrestle. Yeah, man, it's it's been busy. Um... You know, over the last few years, we've always had, you know, maybe one kid working hard in the off season to then two kids working hard in the off season to now we got three kids working hard in the off season, you know, that are that are big names. And but you know, behind the behind the doors, we've got 30, 40 kids in there working between all ages in our program. So we're looking for that snowball effect to really to really take place and and make a name for ourselves. Yeah, and we saw how we've seen you guys had had a few duels this this year with with uh uh, I believe summer knockout with Spartan with, uh, yeah. and then uh, obviously um, Rod. That's one kid, man. I think not just George Jenkins, but I think everybody in the state who knows that kid is just so happy to see him yeah. uh, have the success he's having, including you. I mean, you've had him since he was a little boy, right? Well, he so he came to us as a freshman. Um, he, he was, he was catching a ride to school with, uh, with a kid, uh, Jalen who wrestled for us and, uh, coach Bailey, the athletic director, he uh, actually knew the kid and was talking to him and rods passed out in the back seat. And he was like, Hey man, like you need, you, that was during COVID. So like we had to do like thermometer checks and everything for kids coming on campus. So he had to roll the window down and, and Rod had to get his forehead scanned. And it was one of those <laughs> things like, Hey man, you're going to wrestle. Like you're going to wrestle. You're riding to school every day with a wrestler. Like you're going to wrestle. And uh, the rest is history. So, you know, what, what he's been able to do in, in four years in his career from a guy that, you know, we're, we're green and gold and he wore a red headgear and some, some <laughs> terrible wrestling shoes and couldn't even barely tie them to, you know, being a two-time state placer and a Fargo All-American is, is ginormous for him. And, you know, it's big for our program, but it's a true testament of how much effort he's put in. Yeah, and listen, a lot of college coaches were were sniffing around, asking about him in Fargo. I know I know. as of right now, he's heading off to a JUCO, and uh, I hope that uh, that sets him in the right direction to get some structure yeah. there, education, wrestle at the next level. And obviously – He's a little dude. I mean, he's so powerful, but he's a little dude. Yeah. Someone's going to have to figure out how to put 20 pounds on him. Yeah. And, but uh, but to watch him wrestle and, and to see everybody on the Fargo team kind of come together and, and root for him was was really fun. I mean, another another young kid, Drew Taylor, um, just kind of out of nowhere. I mean, this kid has just been wrestling really well. Uh, we saw, we've seen him get some huge wins this offseason. Man, what? How do you feel about the growth of that kid? So that kid, like uh, Drew, kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> he showed up to us uh, going into his freshman year. We were wrestling a preseason tournament at Bartow, and that was kind of his first tournament that he's that he, he's wrestled with us. And I mean, he he is such a motivated person. Um, he's got some jujitsu background, so he he knows how to grapple. He knows how to roll. Um, so he's got that to his advantage, you know. But um, they're a super competitive family. His parents are great. And um, I mean, he has traveled all over the place this summer, just trying, he, he is a sponge. He wants to soak up as much as he can. So um, he had a heck of a freshman year, obviously he and his family and, and us as a program, we've set goals on him as well for, you know, his sophomore year and for him man, the sky's the limit. He loves Virginia tech. He wants to go wrestle for, uh, for Roby and um, you know, Honestly, man, I, I think he could do it. He's got the grades. He's got the work ethic. Um, and he's got three years left to to continue to grow yeah. towards that. Well, we know a guy out there that uh, was just an okay wrestler in Florida with prayer. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure if we can get him to keep his eye on him, I'm, I'm sure it'd be something to be interested in. But uh, 
something more more exciting is you're starting to build a little something there on the girls' side. You're yeah. starting to see some girls come into the George Jenkins program. Uh, obviously, one of them that sticks out right now is Mia. Uh, what a great a great year she's had. She had with you guys uh, making the state tournament, having a lot of success, and then. I was there with you. That trip to Puerto Rico, watching her compete at the Pan yeah. Ams, uh, yeah. man, she battles. Yeah, so you know, obviously, girls wrestling is is what year four, year five now, um, as far as a team standpoint in the FHS. <clears throat> but you know, Jenkins, <clears throat> we've had girls wrestlers, you know, off and on for for a long time. Um, we've got Haley Childs, who's a two time. Um, Fargo All-American, she back in, you know, 09, 10 era. Um, she was a two or three time state champ for Florida. She was a state champ in California before that. Um, we've got Katie Germain, who is a Fargo national champion for Team Florida from George Jenkins yeah. High School. So, so, so you know, everybody, my school. my bad when I shouted out Rod. I was told <laughs> I meant I meant on the boys' side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got I, you, man. I got you. Because I do know, I do know Katie Jermaine, and I did yeah. have her on twice, and she's awesome. But yeah, so there's been more than just Rod, but Rod did. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, we don't well, want to separate boys and girls, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, so yeah, Katie Jermaine was a stud, right? Yeah, yeah. She, uh, I was actually her teammates with her at, at Bartow before she came to George Jenkins. Um, you know, so like we're, we're trying to, to build the boys program, but at the same time, we're trying to build the girls program. So, you know, right now, a lot of those girls are wrestling with the boys or, you know, practicing with the boys, or at least, you know, teaming up together and, and, and wrestling in the boys practice room. Um, and I think that's kind of what's really helped Mia for sure. I mean, she's wrestled with Drew, she's wrestled with Rod, she's wrestled, you know, with a lot of boys, um, close to her weight. We've got some other girls that are showing the effort and putting in the work. Alyssa Gerber. Um, I mean, she's, she's wrestled a bunch of matches this summer. She's battling a little bit of a elbow injury, but she's hungry too. Um, so, you know, we don't, we don't view it as the, the girls program or the boys program. Like we are Jenkins wrestling and, and we're, we're striving for great. Awesome. Well, listen, it was a great experience. I had never been to anything like that in Puerto Rico before or anywhere. And Dude, I know you had Puerto Rico. Know. Puerto Rico is a blast. Okay. <laughs> uh, so like I've, so... I've never, I've never been out of the country and uh, I work with some ladies. They're, they're Puerto Rican. So I was telling them like, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. Blah, blah, blah. And um, you know, I was practicing my Spanish cause I'm always messing <laughs> with the ladies here and in, in, in the office and trying to speak Spanish to them. So um, getting to go to Puerto Rico was one of the coolest things I've ever done. You know, yes, it's, it's part of the United States, but like, it's a foreign country. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, up, listen, that, that I got gym, my passport that, now, so I can yeah. go with her to the Pan Ams next time too. Listen, I've been to your room. I've been to Lake Gibson's room. I've been to a lot of those Polk and Lake County rooms and they're hot, but they don't compare to that gym that we were in in Puerto Rico. Dude, Guayama was probably the hottest gym I have ever been in in my life. There was, it, you know, because it still had the hurricane damage, so it was like wet, you know. And then uh, there's the breeze is outside; it's not coming through. There's no electricity. There's no AC. At one point, Mia like had to come find me because I was sleeping out on the steps, taking a nap because that's the only place I could get a uh, a breeze. And, it was, and it was what ha bad. and what happens is they're at the mercy of. Well, like like you guys in high school would say the county has control of the lights in the gym, right? So whatever it's called in Puerto Rico has control of the lights in the gym. So remember, we waited like two hours to see if the lights would come on. Yeah. The city or the township or whatever they call it there. Um, they wrestled for like two hours in the dark, remember? Yeah. And then the lights came on. Everybody cheered. And then the lights went off. <laughs> and they didn't miss a beat. They just no, kept, they kept going. going. They, they kept, just kept going. wrestling. Yeah. And it was great. They did a great job. And it was cool to experience like the international style and, and seeing it on an actual international mat with the yeah. orange lines and stuff like that. And it was cool. Well, she had a, she had success there, um, uh, getting getting the job done against a very, very gritty young young lady who I think we'll see yeah. doing yeah, big things. Coming for, her for sure. Yeah, great young lady as well. Um and she did what she had to do, and she had a battle on her hands. 
and then she went down to Dominican Republic. She got her second bronze. Yeah. So man, so so this year, the off season for George Jenkins, an All American at Fargo, and a bronze medalist at Pan Ams. That's that's not too shabby, right? No, I mean it's pretty good. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, we're 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 trying to get you know more and more accolades every every summer. So, um, what is this fifth or sixth year at the helm? So I'm going into my sixth year. And you've already had what I think six or seven state places. You've had a ton of state qualifiers, right? Yeah, yeah. Whatever the total is, you know they're yeah. all equally important. I'd have to do some math and and write but it all you, down. But but you're building, and you know, being a kid that wrestled at Bartow, um, obviously you fell in love with the sport. Uh, what did you always want to coach and give back, or was it something that you kind of slid into? Or I know that you're. You do have a, a pretty large position. What, what's your position at the school now? So I'm now a dean of students. So I dean handle a lot of discipline on campus. So I'm it's, part of the administration team here now. Yeah. So tough. Kind of like um, Coach George, right? Over that location. Yeah. yeah, yeah so, so Coach George, there. he's now he's now um, an assistant principal, but he was a dean before. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So for you guys to be able to handle both jobs is a lot of work for you, but. You know, did you always want to coach? Was it something that you loved to do? Did you, did you were you yeah, always I mean, in love with the sport? You know, I don't, I don't necessarily know if if that was like always my goal. I mean, I've been around wrestling my for my whole life. I mean, my dad's been a coach, and since I can remember, and I mean, I can remember being three, four years old, carrying a blanket, getting on a school bus, and driving to whatever gym um, <laughs> as a little kid, and you know, and spending time there. So it, it's always been a huge part of my life. Um, my high school program, we really weren't able to do a lot um, during the summer. You know, we weren't – the Bartow High School is known for softball. They're known for basketball. Um, I mean, they got cheerleading. They got state titles all over the place. So Cow, cow tipping. Yeah, yeah, something like that, you know. <laughs> out in the field. But um, for the most part, like, wrestling kind of got the, the shaft, you know. So, like, my junior year, we lost our wrestling room to the cheerleaders. Um, so they could hold their mats and do backflips and things like that in there. So then we got shipped over to Summerlin and we were practicing on a judo mat and the judo instructor didn't like that we were wearing shoes. And it was, it's just, you know, that, that school, you know, obviously I went there and, and I, and I loved it and glad to be a, a Bartow grad, but you know, they didn't, they didn't necessarily care about wrestling. So there was a lot that I left out in my high school careers, um, you know, where I could have probably taken the next step or gotten better, or, you know, done whatever, but it just didn't happen. Um, and I think now we tell our kids in our program, like, you guys have it made, you guys have it blessed. Like, you know, we're spending time away from our, our kids and our families to take you guys across the country or into another country or, you know, whatever it is to wrestle. And it's a blast. You know, it's things and you guys that I have a great, uh, you guys have a great room there. I mean, you have your yeah. own room with the big yeah. room. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we're we very, we're very lucky and we're trying to get the kids to realize that, you know, it's um, things that we didn't have as, as a coaching staff as when like we were in high school or kids or, you know, things that we're trying to make these kids, um, you know, be able to be around and be a part of, um, you know, because obviously like it's a huge part of it. Um, and without the, with, with those things back in our day, who knows, who knows what, where yeah. I'm sitting right now, you know, I don't well, know, but. And I think um, if you if you talk to a lot of people, man, it, it really you're really building a family atmosphere there. People yeah. are are loving to be around there, be around you guys. And now you've added um, you've added a couple coaches, the addition of Tony last, last year, and then Matt Markowski, uh, who used to coach uh, Fort Myers, and a couple of uh, a couple of twins he coached there before they went off to LHP. They uh, they they did pretty well. And you've got Matt Monkowski now. You've got the addition of Coach Tony. Man, what, uh, what? Uh, well, you've had a year with Tony, and then you've got Matt Monkowski coming in. Uh, man, what, what has the addition of Tony been, and and how, how, uh, how much do you think Matt is going to help grow your program? Yeah. So my first uh, what three, 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 four years, it was just me and Alex, uh, Coach Alex Abasawa. Love and, him. Uh, great, great young man. Great he, guy. Works hard. He, he is so passionate. He is so he passionate. Loves, he loves the kids. He loves the sport. And not only do you see him loving just George Jenkins kids, he loves all those Cook County kids. I mean, they come in at the right over and he really Listen, he he talked to a wall if the wall would listen to him. He, he doesn't <laughs> he doesn't 
pay attention to to singlets or shirts or hats or whatever it is. Like he yeah. just couldn't talk wrestling to you. So um, for the first three or four years, you know, it was just me and him and we're both young. We're both in our twenties and both learning along the way. And, you know, we had some growing pains and some hiccups and things like that. And, um, you know, with the addition of Tony, like I've known him, God, I don't know, plus, 10 plus years, 15 plus years, something like that. So um, definitely friends, definitely get along. Um, a lot of our ideologies are the same, you know, and, and I think that, you know, him being a head coach before, he could add value to the program and, and helping me, helping me learn at the same time. Um, you know, and, and we've had conversations and he's like, you know, he says that he's learned things from me and I've learned things from him. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, it, he's the the girls head coach and I'm the boys head coach. We're in there getting better. It doesn't matter, you know, who's showing moves or who's doing, doing what uh, on a practice day, but you know, he, he's been tremendous in, in helping the program. You know, you talked about adding like a family atmosphere as a, as a young coach, husband, wife, or a wife, husband, father, Dean, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of juggling that goes on. Right. So there was things that like, as a young coach, I was letting slip through the cracks and, you know, might not necessarily read the room the best way, think that this kid's doing great, but his parents absolutely hate my guts. And that did happen. And, um, <laughs> We had we had kids leave and I thought everything was hunky dory. And before you know it, I'm getting an email that a kid's leaving. But, you know, life goes on. But so Tony has added an aspect where like, I mean, he's a people person. He he's loves a, people, just loves humans. Yeah. Loves we, we kids him, too. We, we call him the salesman, you know. So <laughs> yeah. um he uh he's kind of taken over the, the the idea of like good cop, bad cop. He's the good cop. I can be the bad cop sometimes. <laughs> um so he he's done. And that's a great okay. Job. You need that yeah, in any business. You, know, any business. you gotta have balance. You gotta have balance. Yeah, yeah. And, and he loves Mark the kids. Counts, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, I no, and I know he loves the kids because he you know, yeah, he loved absolutely. mine and mine used to come around and and I think he's just passionate about that. But he brought yeah. another passionate guy in and Matt Markowski, who's been coaching for a long time. Yeah, man, we got lucky. Um so at the end of last school year, we had some teaching openings open up and one of my assistant principals was like, Hey, do you know this guy? And I was like uh, yeah, yeah, I know that guy. And they're like, oh, he just applied for a math position. I'm like, okay, well, that's pretty cool. Um, and I guess the rest is history, man. He's um, back in the area. He, he was in Lakeland for the last few years, helping out at um, Lakeland High School a little bit behind the scenes with his with his son. And um, now he's getting back into teaching and he's on campus. And that's a huge, huge help having a coach on campus. Um, you know, wrestling coaches for the most part, I would think like 80% are, you know, community coaches, at least in our area. Um, a lot of them are community coaches and it's tough to recruit kids, you know, in the hallways and, and getting them in there when you never see them, you don't know them. You know, if you're a community coach, you might know 15 students on your campus because those 15 are your wrestlers. You don't see everybody else. So um, he's going to be teaching freshmen. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully he can, pluck some kids out of his yeah. class and, to come and, down and, and give George a shot. Jenkins is a huge school. I mean, it's a big property. There's a lot of kids there. It's tough to see all the kids, but you know, um, a family I know that had, has been pretty important to your program. I know dad is now coaching girls with his daughter, I believe, right? Or another, another program over there, but the people's family, you had, you had the people's family in the program that dad is, uh, is a tremendous human being, but you know, having having that family around your program, I'm sure, only only helped. What what has the people's family meant to that program when they were there? Yeah, yeah. So the the people's family all around, they're the best people. They, um, Mr. Peoples himself, is extremely giving. He's extremely caring, and you know, he he'll ask questions, and he's going to try to find answers to, you know, to to give you the answer. So. Um, you know, when I was young and dumb that first year, we got seven to go. We had no idea what was going on. Um, his oldest son was a was a sophomore that year. Um, I can't I don't think he made it to regionals. He had wrestled um in districts, but didn't make it to regionals. And Timmy, his um youngest son was um still in middle school wrestling for our middle school program. But when we got sent home from COVID, you know, the school board was like, We're not you can't be on campus at all. Um, and we didn't know a lot about COVID or anything like that. And AAU was saying that, you know, as long as you follow your local guidelines, like you guys can still 
do what, you know, you can still practice. So um, Mr. Peoples, they actually opened up their church for us. So we had a mat in there and, you know, we were kind of doing like, uh, uh, like fight club uh, underground <laughs> practices, you know? So um, he's just been a tremendous help. Obviously his, both of his boys were pretty dang good wrestlers yes, and sure. um, they got a few state medals between them and state qualifiers and stuff like that. And then um, his, his daughter, Maria, she wrestled for us in middle school for Lakeland Highlands and um, she's going to IB. Well, IB is uh, a Bartow school. And so she would have to wrestle for, for Bartow. Well, Bartow didn't have a, a girls wrestling program. And again, like I mentioned before, you know, that school might not necessarily have wrestling on the, on the, the forefront. And um, they were like, well, we need somebody. And Mr. Peoples was like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and um, I mean, he, he's a wrestling coach. He is a, a man of faith. He is a, a father. He's a, a, a husband. He's a middle school girl soccer coach. He helps with Boy Scouts. He's done jute. I mean, the, the guy, I don't know what he, what he can't do. Um, he recently just had a birthday and I literally said, I, I don't know, you know, what you've done in these 50 years, who knows what you're going to do in your next 50 because <laughs> you've already he done so much so they're they're great people i can't say thank yeah. you enough to them um i i hate and that timmy's graduating you know <laughs> Mr. people's I, I need you to have another son or that guy that guy that guy timmy that kid first of all one of the best kids you'll ever meet but second of all my son wrestled him at like 132 and by the next year he was wrestling like 170 and i was like what the hell did you eat boy like he likes to eat. literally one Moskowitz, and I think it was still called George Jenkins then. Daniel and him wrestled. And they were at like a, like thirty two pounders at the time. Yeah. And this kid overnight became six foot four and one hundred and eighty pounds, and it was amazing. <laughs> Something I was like, "Well, yeah. you guys will never wrestle again." <laughs> Daniel stayed. Yeah, stayed Timmy. And... Timmy was always the kind of guy that he was so just cool calm and collected um he never really showed any kind of emotion you know if, if he lost he would just hold his head up and, and walk off the mat if he won he would hold his head up and walk off the mat um you know we didn't really see a lot of emotion until his senior year um you know when he when he won a regional title and then finished third in the state you know, we finally saw the emotion and it, it was cool to see you know um definitely you know brought tear to your eye because it was like okay he he realizes it's done now. It, it's over, and yeah, uh, deserved, finally let loose was was really cool. And he deserved all that success. Yeah, you know, I want you to talk about a couple of your tournaments that are that are I know near and dear to your heart with Moskowitz and then recently passed away Bob Harley. But uh, one thing I know that is important to a wrestling coach is having an AD that really cares. And uh, from what I understand, Bump Bailey is one of the best around and. And he really buys into not just all the athletics, but he does he does like wrestling. And what how important is how important is it to have a guy like him at the AD home, or to have an AD that is supportive? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, Bailey is the reason why I got the job here. You know, I I didn't have any teaching experience, and um, the former wrestling coach who was a teacher was leaving, and you know, hosting the tournaments, like you mentioned, that, that generates a lot of revenue for the school. And, um, he kind of broke it down to the numbers and was like, listen, wrestling is, is pretty big on our campus. And it's pretty big when it comes to to paying the bills and, and the finance aspect of it. So we've got to get somebody on campus to, to coach wrestling. And, um, again, like I said, I had no, no teaching experience whatsoever. And somehow I got the job and, you know, the rest is history, but, um, you know, he's, he's, he's great at what he does. He can be a little rough around the edges. And if you don't know him, you might immediately hate him because of his, uh, his attitude or, you know, whatever he, I, I tell him all the time, like in a much worse way, I tell him like, you're a jerk, you know, but you're my jerk. So uh, we, we can, we can handle that. But he he's one of the smartest guys I know. Um, you know, I'm always bugging him, asking him questions and, you know, watching film and, and things like that. And, um, you know, he's, he's a wealth of knowledge. So he, 
He wants to get back into it a little bit, I think. His daughter is now on campus here. She's a ninth grader playing volleyball. So, you know, he's busy with that. He's got another one in middle school that she plays volleyball and soccer too. So he's just, he's kind of doing the dad thing, you know, trying to be a fan. And, and, and am I correct in saying he was a pretty good wrestler himself? He was all right. Yeah, he was, he was pretty good. He was pretty good. He, he went up and wrestled, uh, at um upper iowa i think if if i'm saying that wrong he's probably gonna bust in the door and, and judo chop me or something i don't know but um <laughs> but yeah he was he was a pretty good wrestler um himself but you know we've we've had some guys in the past on this campus that were you know pretty pretty good wrestlers i mean you mentioned dan moskowitz who uh we now have a tournament named after he was longtime wrestling coach here for george jenkins and his sons wrestled and they've got, you know, state runner up and state medals between them. And, um, you know, he's, he's no longer with us, but, you know, we name a tournament after him because, because of how influential he was to, you know, not only George Jenkins wrestling, but like, you know, he was on national level. So um, he, he's, he's got a name for himself for sure. Yeah. And the Moskowitz has been great. I mean, when I first, when my son first started, it was to George Jenkins and then, I think uh, year two or three, it trans it transferred into the Moskowitz, and, yeah. uh, and now it's been the Moskowitz ever since. And it's man, what a what a tournament! It's really grown, at least in the years that I've been there. Now you've got the addition of girls. Yeah, <laughs> I think next year it's only going to be bigger with the girls. Um, I know this year was the first time that you <clears throat> you put the girls tournament to start. In the back side, the boys in the front side, and then as the tournament went on, the girls, because it's not as big yet, kind of ended, and then you were able to kind of blend uh, blend the rooms again. But man, it's been a great tournament. I mean, I mean, the, listen, you, you're getting Nate Gibson there. You're getting. I've seen South Bay girl. I've seen uh, Motor Academy camp in South Florida. We've seen uh, the Tigers. Over at Jesuit, coming. I mean, I could continue to name names. Uh, we've seen, I believe, a few years ago, didn't we see Lake Highland Prep there during the COVID? I don't know. I I think that they have been there um, before before I got here. I know one year Bailey was telling me that they had like fifty plus teams, which was yeah. absolutely nuts. And, um, and and I mean the uh, the COVID, the COVID George Jenkins was uh, the COVID Moscow, which was out of this world because. All the South Florida teams were there because they couldn't yeah. wrestle in Miami. Yeah, they so weren't allowed. I, I tell people, <clears throat> if you were a fan of wrestling during COVID and lived in Central Florida, you really were blessed with some great wrestling because all those teams came up here. So we every weekend we got to see the the South Bay, the Somersets, the Cardinal Gibbons, the you know the Miami Palmettos. I mean, I mean, I could keep going through all those teams. They were all coming up Southwest Miami, and yeah. it was uh, it was great to see. But um, that continues to grow. If, if you haven't uh, been to the Moskowitz or compet competed at the Moskowitz, and now uh, girls have a girls tournament there. I remember when you would see a, a Kaylee Reese go up and and uh, and she'd be she she'd be beating the boys up because yeah. she didn't have a choice. You had to rest on that side, but now now it's good. But now uh, you know, God rest his soul, Bob Harley has passed and. Uh, you guys have started a tournament. Talk about him and, and and the tournament that you guys are. And I believe that's a duel, right? Yeah, that's a duel. So we used to call that the Eagle Duels um, the first week back after Christmas break. And um, Coach Bob, with his passing, we decided to, to name it after him. You know, he's a guy who was part of George Jenkins wrestling for over 20 years. And, you know, he – he never wanted any anything extra or anything less. He just, you know, was happy to be there. Um, he loved his boys is what he called them and, and his girls at the same time as, as that started to, you know, kind of take speed. But he was just happy to be there. Um, there was no place else that he wanted to be. So, I mean, I can remember when I first got on there uh, here at Jenkins, you know, I'd known him for a while, knew, knew who he was. And um He's just such a giving guy. I mean, he would bring me, he would smoke meat or something the night before, and he'd bring me a whole plate and be like, here, coach, I brought this for you. Or, I mean, he, a, a, an FHSAA state towel from, like, 2009. He's like, hey, I, I think you'd like this. And it's like, hey, Bob, thank you. You know, he just, he had a giving heart. He, he had a loving heart. And um, 
you know, obviously we, we, uh, we miss him sitting in his chair there at practice and his, um, his health got bad there towards the end and he wasn't able to be there as much as he wanted to. And I knew that was bothering him. And, um, you know, the, the kids saw it too. The kids loved him. And, uh, that, that was tough. That was tough to go through. That was something I've never done before. Um, you know, having a loss in the program, I know that you've, you've talked to some different people, uh, coaches across the state who've dealt with that. And, you know, obviously I've been watching those and thinking about them and keeping them in the prayers too, but you know, it's, it's something that you don't, you don't, they don't teach you that you're not prepared for that, you know? So, um, it was neat. We, we got the, we got the team together and we went to his funeral together and, you know, we, we wanted to, to, to handle it and, and get through it together, you know, family. Awesome. Well, and now, uh, now his family can always remember him and, uh, and come out to the duels and watch some wrestling. And, uh, hopefully, uh, you have his chair and you just sit it right there on the, yeah. on the side and say, that's, uh, that's his chair. Don't sit in it. Yeah. Don't sit in that chair. Get out of the way. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and, uh, I guess uh, I guess with people's over there, we won't hear now from George Jenkins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his yeah. announcing's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you know, I guess people were giving him a hard time. He got upset last year. He's like, you know what? You take the mic. But uh, yeah, there there was a there was a coach um, over from the East Coast area who. Uh, I guess they, they chose the wrong spot in the bleachers and, and the speaker <laughs> was kind of pointing right at him and they didn't, they didn't like his, um, his announcing, but I think they were the only people in the gym that didn't like it. So. But whether you like it or not, it's been part of at least of the four, the four tournaments that I've been to or five tournaments now. I don't know. They keep adding up. Uh, it's just part of it. It's, it's what it is, right? Like we don't go to a, like a, a college football game and go up to tell the announcer, stop announcing your teams. Yeah. It's just something he does. Whether it's loud, too loud, too soft, it's part of what George Jenkins was. And every time we went to that tournament, that, that was the nostalgia of it. So it was, it was, uh, I don't know. Hey, I guess he's not for everybody. Right. But um, I didn't mind it. Yeah. No, I enjoyed <laughs> so, it. I enjoyed it. People, I, you know, Jenkins people enjoyed it. That's for sure. Yeah. So now he's over what did you say Bartow? He is at Bartow. Yeah, he's the head girls wrestling coach at Bartow. And now he'll be like, now for Bartow. Yeah, we're gonna have to take we're gonna have to take the mic out of his hand. <laughs> no. Not allowed to, not allowed to do that. <laughs> no more. Well, I'm sure his girls will be at the at the Moskowitz this year. And uh and that's awesome. Well, man, this this off season and this whole year, man, you've really seen uh a lot of growth. You guys have been traveling a lot of places. I I've seen you guys all over and um, obviously being close with Tony, I hear a lot about the program and nothing but terrible things. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, it's all great, man. He loves being there. He loves the program. He loves the kids like always. And uh, um, I'm glad to, I'm, I'm glad to kind of feel like I'm a part of it a little bit. So it's, it's been you fun get, to hear about the, the, the best of every world, man. You're, you know, you're a fan of everybody and everybody's a fan of you. So you just get to sit back and I mean, yeah, it's, you don't it's even so, have any, any rivalries or anything. No, it's so hard. I hate like, uh, the one thing I hate is like all these kids. It's really cool that now that when I first started in COVID, a lot of those kids now are in college. So yeah. it's kind of cool watching them on TV and talking to them. Um, but yeah, it kind of sucks. Like, for example, when when uh, when Mia wrestled the young lady in Puerto Rico, both those girls, amazing young ladies. I've covered both of them. I love both of them. What do yeah. you do, right? What one is for? one is absolutely excited, and I go over and say, "Man, great job! I love you. Great job." The other one's got her hand in her face over in the hallway, crying and disappointed. It's like two sides of the coin, and you go over there and be like, "Hey, I love you, but it's okay. Keep your head up." And what do you do? So you see these kids that you've covered, that you love, they support you, and then they wrestle each other, and you're like, Shh. yeah, dang. Ugh. And people, so I try to be, but then I also get myself in trouble because maybe there's a kid wrestling that I just I'm, I've watched him grow from freshman year, and and it's so exciting to see him get a win, and I high five him right on the side of the mat, and the other cook's like, hey, what the hell, right? 
Yeah. And I'm like, well, I didn't mean to do that. I mean, I it just happens, right? Like, I, I just love all these kids, and it's so much fun to see the growth in, in the sport, at least in the, the time I've been here since COVID, and getting to talk to coaches and talking to them a little bit again now has been uh, to see everybody go from we can't wrestle, this sucks, to man, we're up and running at full force, and it's yeah, it's been great. And then even sometimes my son gets mad at me because he's like, ah, you love girls wrestling more than you love us boys, and blah blah. blah. And I'm like, no, I love all wrestling, but you should root for you should root for us more, right? And I'm like, I just root for everybody more, right? And he loves the girls too. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But but sometimes I just tell him, I go, man, I don't know. I have more fun when I'm at a girls tournament, or I have I've seen the growth of these girls go from having like when I when I went to COVID, there was like a handful of sanctioned teams around the state, around the yeah. country, around the world, and then we've seen the growth of it. And I've watched these little girls grow up, and and now they're doing great things in high school and college, and it's been fun to watch the growth of a sport that was almost non-existent, right? It's hard to not get behind it, you know? It's, it's, yeah. it's hard to not be a fan of it. Even if you don't you – know, people coming into wrestling, if you don't really know what it is, go to a girls' tournament because it is loud, it is energetic, it is hyper, it is it is nonstop. And, I mean, you can't just – you go to a girls' tournament, you're going to have a smile on your face just because of, you know, the amount of energy that's going into it. Yeah. Especially at Spartan. Last, and those, those girls, I mean, I kept looking down like – Going looking down the all the mats and thinking like what in the heck is going on down there? Because... Oh well, if you I, all the Spartan, all the Team War boys were like frustrated because if you look at my pictures, it's all the girls' team. Yeah, <laughs> Not a lot yeah. Of but I I had so much fun watching them wrestle. But yeah, I mean, listen, obviously I love all the wrestling, and my son just likes to bust my balls. But that, that's, that's what kids okay. do, right? You know, that's okay. But yeah, to see the girls, I mean. Really, like last year at Fargo, I didn't get there till the final day of girls because of uh, how the schedule worked out. So I, at least I got to see the final girls. And the finals at Fargo for the girls is an absolute party, right? Like these girls, they got the phone lights on, they're dancing and singing. Tony Rotundo's up there getting them going. They're playing music. It's just yeah, the boys get excited when their team guy is walking down and they got the shirts off and they're swinging it. But they're not doing what the girls are doing, right? It's just, it's it's, it's like a like a show. You go to watch these girls and, and it, you get to see the, the excitement of winning, the sport, the agony of defeat. But then you get to see the camaraderie that they have is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, you go to the state tournament and there'll be a girl wrestling – and you'll see 10 girls from 10 different schools right there on the edge rooting for, the, for this girl. And, yeah, I mean, you see some of that with the boys, and, and, and I love the boys, but you see a lot of it with the girls. There's something about – there's something special going on with that side of the sport. Really. Yeah, for sure. It's just cool to be a part of. Even me, when I do media days, I love doing the girls. I love going to see the boys. The boys are so much fun. A media day with the girls, man. <laughs> they get they get down, man. I would imagine it's, it's completely opposite ends of the spectrum there. Yeah, I know. Just you know, hanging out with with our girls, you know, in our room, they're they're a totally different different level of of hyper than than the boys. I mean, we've got some boys that they're you know they got great energy, but like Mia, I mean, we're we're driving to Miami to their homestead for South Dade uh, State Champ Camp and. She's screaming, singing, you know, lat Latina music, and I mean, we're blaring it. The boys are telling her all to to shut it off and turn it yeah. off. And she's like, "No," and she's just singing. So, and it's just fun, definitely right? a different energy to it. Yeah, yeah, and it's look. Obviously, I love them all, but there's something the girls have something special going on in our country and in the world. And I hope they continue to watch it grow. Look, they just brought home two gold medals. Yeah, at the Olympics, which was fun to watch. So. We've got some really good Hopefully, boys getting ready more. to wrestle. Hopefully one more at least, right? With uh with Marulis. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and listen, we've got some uh we've got some boys out there that are gonna have something to say about a medal too, I'm sure. Uh, I know a couple of them won this morning. But uh yeah, it's just been fun learning the sport and understanding the sport. Even from when I first started taking pictures, I had no idea what I was doing with the camera. I put it on automatic. I had no idea what a wrestling move really 
consisted of. Yeah. And I would get a lot of asses and elbows. And now through my lens, I've learned the sport because from watching so many matches and, and through the lens, now I see, okay, there's an underhook in. Uh-oh. There's a hip going, getting turned. Uh-oh. Yeah. His leg is between their feet. Uh-oh. He's something, there's yeah. a seat belt in. There's a wizard. Oh, he's up over the ankle. Like something's coming, right? Like uh, you're, I mean, you're you're learning how to kind of understand like where the action is going. You know, like before, if you're just standing in one spot and just clicking pictures, you don't really know what's going on, right? But if you can say, okay, he's got this leg or he's got this underhook, you can at least walk around the mat and get to a better side because you know where that action is going to take it. So yeah, um, either the defender's going to whizzer, lay out, get his hip down, or or he's going to get launched. <laughs> you know, there's something coming, right? So it's been cool to kind of learn the sport through the lens of my camera. Um, yeah. really, and it's true because sometimes I'll tell my kids, and rightfully so, they're like, what the hell do you know, Dad? You never wrestled. What are you talking about? I'm like, I know, but I took, I've taken, I don't know, 200,000 photos. So I've watched a few matches, right? And you've been around, you've been around it long enough. Right. So I say to them, you know, uh, I try to do it differently now. I try to say, hey, you know, I was watching this wrestling match, Daniel, and when the guy had the underhook, it, he, I kind of saw how he stepped to the side and then did this. Is that something you do? No, no, but I do it like, okay, I'm just checking because it seemed to work for him, right? So I don't, now I'm not saying, hey, you should try this, right? I'm just saying, yeah, you know, or or you watch like the kids from Pennsylvania, they do where they'll, instead of shooting straight to that single leg, they kind of sidestep a little bit and then come in, right? So I was watching that. I'm like, hey, did you see how they kind of step out first and then come in? And I'm learning. I'm seeing all that stuff, right? And, and so I try to relay it differently now because I don't want them to think I'm trying to coach or I'm trying to tell them what to do or just tell them what I see when I'm watching the match. So um, the older one is pretty... He's a he's a wrestling nerd, but he watches all those matches, watches all those tournaments. He kind of educates me on stuff. But yeah, man, he, him, he he battled his butt off in Puerto Rico. Yeah, man, what a what a good you know. Unfortunately, we didn't we didn't get the result we wanted in Pan Am, and uh, and he'll admit that it was, it, he's never been in a stage like that before. You know, you know where we came from as a wrestling family to to where he is now, and yeah, he he definitely got the yeah, you know, his stomach was turning, and that yeah. first match. Plus, you know, I guess when you're wrestling, it's kind of like Fargo, where when you're a cadet, kids are still kids. You're going two minute rounds. There's not really, you know, occasionally you get that anomaly that's just a powerhouse at fourteen or fifteen, right? But for the most part, they're still kids still, right? So when you're going like U15, U17, but at U20, he said, man, this dude was a grown-ass man. Like, yeah. I feel the power was so different. The, the strength was different. The, the feeling was different. And he's never felt like that before. So, but I'm glad he got to experience it and kind of, you know, for the rest of his life, whether he makes another team or doesn't, he could always say, there was a time I did that when I made the team and I got to go to college, right? To me, man, that that's it right there. You know, um, it's kind of been our thing is, you know, if a kid decides that after high school he's done, you know, he's not going to wrestle anymore, he can say that wrestling took me to Michigan. He can say that wrestling yeah. took him to Fargo, North Dakota. He can say that wrestling yeah. took him or her to the Dominican Republic or, you, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, that's what we're doing it for. We're doing it for it's the men. Sure. Like I was saying, with, and with Fargo, you see a lot of these cadets become juniors. And they don't see the same success that first year as they had in cadets because now the game is faster, the game is quicker, the people are stronger. Yeah, uh, the, the playing field is, is is leveled. Yeah. You know, three minute rounds. I mean, you know, I was talking to Mason, and you'll see when you go there that you're seeing world champion beat. You're seeing you're seeing qualifiers. You're seeing three, four times state champs get beat. I mean, it's it's no joke. That's a great tournament. And the, the one thing that was really special to me was a kid like Gunnar Holland. First of all, he finally gets there and he gets an All-American. But he said, man, 
this this is something, man. It's the hardest thing. Yeah. I think I've ever been a part of it. Thank goodness I went for two months to my college and worked because without that, I, I don't know all Americans are. I mean, this thing is great. And to see him and obviously uh, his teammate, Cooper, uh, Cooper Heap. Anderson. Do yeah. it and, and together, you know, kids growing up like that. But yeah, it's, it's something out there. Have you been? Yeah, I went. Um, I didn't go this year. I went last year, the year before, and um, man, it's it's eye opening. Oh, that's right. You were there last year. I was there with you. Yeah, we uh, we ran into each other at the uh, the yeah. herd and turf. Wild or, Wings. Yeah, it was some. Uh, oh yeah, the uh, the hamburger place, the bar. Yeah, where they yeah. were doing USA Wrestling was doing a. Uh, a yeah, you guys came thing. in as we were walking out. You were with uh, Jason uh, Fulmore. Yeah. He's awesome. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's man, that place I can get to. But the um working with the five guy. The uh I can get yeah, for that food. It was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's a it's a special tournament. It's it's fun. But yeah, you see these kids go on different levels and and uh and I don't know, I can relate. I played basketball a little bit when I was younger and I remember going from J V to varsity. You know how in high school, uh in soccer or tennis or basketball or football, uh, you get to a point where, okay, you start JV, but now you're on the travel team for varsity, right? They let you travel with it. So if the varsity team is up big, they'll throw in the JV guys, right? Yeah. And, and I remember the first time I got thrown into a varsity game, man, it felt like the speed doubled on me. Like the defender was on me quicker, the ball came faster. The, you know, I remember soccer, I was playing goalie. And JV, they were, they were kicking the ball pretty hard. They were kicking it in the back. All of a sudden, the varsity, and these guys are kicking the ball from midfield harder than these JV kids are kicking yeah. it in the box. And, uh, and I'm sure in wrestling, I've never wrestled, but I'm sure it's the same way. You go from wrestling cadets to juniors, you go from wrestling uh, a small JV tournament, or you go from 14U to 16U to 18U. I'm sure these levels jump, right? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Well, man, this has been awesome. I appreciate you, man. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't have you on earlier. Hey, listen, you were in the in the Florida Keys, and uh, I mean, I don't blame you. I don't blame you yeah. at all. It was a good time. I got to see my dad, who lives down there, and uh, and we had fun. We had definitely fun. But and I appreciate you coming on. You know, school starts. I'm sure for you in the next ten minutes. So, I think like right, Monday, Tuesday. So we go back Monday. Uh, yeah. I've been back all week. Um, students go back on on Monday, so we're back to the swing of it. Yeah, we're back Tuesday, and then my college kid's going back the seventeenth. So I know he and mom are are heading up to college. So you know, I guess apparently each year you have to unpack your room, and then they assign you a new room, and then you got to unpack where you packed it all and go back in. So yeah, uh, lucky for him, he's got a pretty cool mom. She's showing up and helping him get things done, so nice. uh, she loves her boys. All right, man, well, I'll get this thing together, and I'll get it posted for us. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, Keep man, doing what care. you do, man. We, we love it. We love it. Thanks, man.